FTP, how do you use it to connect up to your SiteGround hosted website? Stick around and I'll show you exactly how. All right, so FTP, how do you use it to connect up to your website that's hosted with SiteGround? Well, first of all, what the heck is FTP? Sounds complex. Sounds like something NASA would use to send satellites into orbit or something. It stands for File Transfer Protocol, and all it is is a method for connecting your computer directly up to your live website. So think of this as opening up a two-way street between your computer, whether that's a desktop or a laptop or whatever you've got, and your live website. Now, why the heck would you want to do this? Well, I can think of a couple of reasons. First of all, maybe you want to back up your site. Well, one way to do that is to connect directly to your site and essentially download it to your computer. You could definitely do that. I do that all the time. Another reason, and maybe a more common reason, is you want to make some kind of change. You want to maybe post an update, or you want to make some kind of a customization. Well, you could grab those files, download them to your computer, make the changes there, and then publish them back to your live website. And that's something that I'll actually demonstrate for you in just a few minutes. It's pretty cool. That's one way anyway for updating. It's not the only way, but it's definitely one option for you. Another reason for FTP, maybe you want to run some maintenance or some admin type stuff related to your site. FTP is a great solution for that as well. Now, again here, FTP isn't the only way to connect up or interact with your site. It just happens to be one of the more common and one of the more direct methods or one of the more direct approaches, which is why I want to show you exactly how it all works. Now, in order to make use of FTP, you will need no less than four items. Five items. I've decided to add one. You will need a username. You'll need a password. You will need a server name. All three pieces of info. I will show you where to go and find those inside your SiteGround account. You will also need, this is our fourth item, of course, for those counting. The fourth item that you're going to need is what's called an FTP application. All this is is a piece of software that allows you to plug in the aforementioned username, password, and server name or host name into it and then connect up to your live site. And there's tons of them out there. There's a, a zillion of them that you could choose from. The FTP application that I'm going to be using is called CyberDuck, which is a crossover from 1987 where Howard the Duck goes back in time with Robocop and they fight crime together. It's just an FTP application. <laughs> and the reason why I'm going to be using it for this demonstration is for a number of reasons. First of all, it's free. You can go and grab it and download it and install it and follow me along in this exercise if you want. Uh, the other reason is that it's cross-platform. So whether you're on a Windows machine or a Mac computer, you can follow along no problem. It isn't my first choice, by the way, of FTP application. And you might be wondering too, like, which FTP application should I be using? Well, I've put together a bunch of other posts and tutorials and material on that very issue. I will leave some links for you, as always, just down below in the show notes. So you can go and check that out if you want. Now... I think that just about does it. What we're going to be doing here is I'm going to show you where to go and grab this information. We'll plug it into your FTP application. We will connect up. We will make a change to our live site and everything should be hunky dory. So if that sounds good to you, it sounds good to me. So let's go and do it. Okay, so I hope you're ready to go. The first thing we should do is go and find those three pieces of information. And in order to do that, the easiest way is to go and log into our SiteGround account. So go ahead and flip over to your browser or launch your browser and go and navigate to SiteGround.com. And of course, what we'll do in the top right corner is go and log in. And of course, go ahead and log into your SiteGround account. Okay, inside your SiteGround account, go ahead and click on the My Accounts tab up at the top. And it's inside the My Accounts tab where we're going to find most of the information that we need. 
So in order to connect to our site via FTP, of course, we're going to need that username and password. The username is going to be our cPanel username, this guy right here. So go ahead and select that guy and copy him, or you may even want to jot him down on a scrap piece of paper or something like that. So that's the first piece of information. The second piece of information that we will need is our password. Now, you may need to go and change your password way over on the right-hand side, okay? So just make sure to go and grab this guy, as I say, and copy him if you haven't done so already. Now, the next thing, so that's two of the three pieces of information down. The third and final piece of information, where it says access cPanel, way over on the right-hand side, go ahead and click on access cPanel. Now, you might get a security warning or two here. That's fine for now. Just go ahead and click on continue if you get any of those sort of errors or anything like this. Here we go. I get a second one here. Go ahead and plow your way through to cPanel if you would. And the third and final piece of information that we need is way over on the left-hand side, server host name, this guy right here. Okay, so let's now take these three pieces of information and plug them into our FTP application. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I'm using CyberDuck just to try and keep everything generic here. On your side, you could also use CyberDuck if you want, or if you're using another FTP application, that is perfectly fine as well. They all generally work in the same way. So inside your FTP application, you're going to have to go and open up a new connection. So here inside CyberDuck, at least in the top left, it says open connection. Look for something similar inside your FTP application. Okay. Now, inside this open connection window I get, at least here inside CyberDuck, right up at the top, I can choose the kind of connection that I want. And we're after FTP, but interestingly, we can use CyberDuck to connect to all kinds of different things, including things like Dropbox and Google Drive and so on. But it's FTP or file transfer protocol that we're after, okay? Now, the username and password, I've already copied my username from a moment ago, right? So I'm just gonna go and paste, there he is. The server is going to be this guy over here inside cPanel. So I'm going to flip back over to my browser. I already have them selected. I'll copy them and then head back to CyberDuck and drop that into the server field. Again, on your side, if you're using a different FTP application, you'll see similar corresponding fields for this information. So there's server, there's username. We need our password as well. Go ahead and plug in. This would be, of course, your cPanel password. And I showed you where you could go to change that if you need to. So the last thing I want you to do before we continue here is just make sure that your port, if you see a port field, make sure that's set to 21. OK, and then go ahead and click on connect. And once again, you might get some some security warnings here. I'm getting an unsecured FTP connection warning. We could dig into this and I could show you how to get rid of that. But again, I'm trying to stay on task here. So just plow through all that stuff as well. Once you finally connect, you should see something like this. You should see a folder list similar to what I'm seeing here. By the way, if you get a, a fail to connect or some kind of an error, uh, message. That means one of those three pieces of information that you plugged in here is incorrect. So double check your settings, of course. Okay. Now, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all there is to connecting to your SiteGround hosted website via FTP. However, I always love adding on some, some extra tidbits and extra tips and information and things like this. So if you want to stick around for a few more minutes, I'd love to show you some extra stuff here specifically, and if you're taking notes, you'll want to jot this down, this folder right here, public underscore HTML. Inside the file structure of your SiteGround hosted website, the, the public HTML folder is the publicly accessible folder or directory where your website is going to be stored. So when people navigate to yourdomain.com, they're navigating into public underscore HTML. And if there's a website in there, it's going to display it. That's how the puzzle pieces all fit together, right? Let me show you this. Let me actually show you what's going on here. Back inside my browser, what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to 10tontesting.com if I can get my pickle thumbs to work. There we go. And when I direct the browser to 10tontesting.com, don't forget in a previous tutorial, I had changed 
10tontesting.com's DNS information. If you saw that tutorial, we pointed the domain name to our SiteGround hosted site. And this is what we see once that domain resolves. We talked about that in that previous tutorial, right? So it says here, an awesome website is coming soon to this address. Where is this page? Where is this file? And can I edit it? Well, I'm going to flip back over to Cyberduck. I'm going to open up public underscore HTML. And there's a file in here called default.htm. This default.htm document or file is this file right here. Okay, does that make sense? So in other words, 10tontesting.com, at least in my case, is pointing to this file right here. Okay, now let me show you some additional neat stuff since we're both sitting here and <laughs> looking at the same thing. Give me a moment here. I'm going to hide everything except for Cyberduck. What I could do if I wanted to, and this is where the fun begins, is I could right-click on default.htm, at least here inside Cyberduck. You could do something similar inside your FTP application as well. There's tons of commands inside this menu that appears, including download, download as, or download to, if I want to choose exactly where I want to download this file to. Or at least here inside Cyberduck, what I could do is I could take this file and drag and drop them right onto my desktop, something like this. Again, I'm getting this unsecure thing. It's kind of driving me nuts, so I'm going to get rid of that. Anyway, there's the the sort of the transfers window that comes up. That's just fine. So there is now the default.htm file sitting on my desktop. What can I do with it? Well, as a matter of fact, you and I could go and edit it and make a change to our live website. So what I've done here, just to kind of back up, I just want to make sure you understand this here, is I've taken a file that's on the live web server and I've copied it down to my local computer. What I'm now going to do and you may choose to just kind of sit back and enjoy the show here, or you can follow me along if you like, is I also happen to have open Atom, which is my code editor, okay? And what I'm going to do inside Atom is, you guessed it, I'm going to go and find default.htm sitting on my desktop, and I'm going to open them up, okay? So this is the guts of default.htm. It looks like a whole bunch of junk. There's all kinds of code in here. This is the code behind the file, of course, right? All kinds of stuff in here. Now, in future tutorials, I'm going to show you exactly how all this stuff works, and we'll put together some fantastic websites for you. But for the time being, notice here on line number 17, it says an awesome website is coming soon to this address. Wait a minute. This line here corresponds with this line right here. How's that for you? That's what's going on here. That's sort of what's happening behind the scenes here. So in other words, if I come back to my coding application and make a change to this file, maybe what I'll do is I'll grab this text and I'll say something like, would you give me a sec? I'm working on it. Whatever change you want to make. Of course, this is just sort of a quick down and dirty example here for you. So I've made a change here to this file. I'm going to save the file. And let's see, I'm going to hide Adam. I'm going to hide my browser, go all the way back down to my desktop. I'm going to take the local file, which I just changed, and I'm going to drag and drop it, you guessed it, back to the live website. And Cyberduck, at least here, goes, whoa, whoa, whoa hold on, wait a second. What do you want to do here? Because there already is a file called default.htm in the directory you're trying to copy this file into. Well, I want to overwrite this guy. Okay, I want to overwrite the old one with the new one. Okay, and again, I get this transfer window coming up. Okay, so now let me show you this. I'm going to head back over to my browser and notice no change. That's because I have to refresh my browser. This little guy right here. Would you give me a sec? I'm working on it. <laughs> so there you go. So what I wanted to show you here was not only how to connect up to your web hosting hub hosted website, but also how you can take a file. Well, first of all, how the, the domain name connects up to that public underscore directory and specifically default.html, but also how you could go and make a change and then re-upload that change or publish that change to your live website. So there you go. Thanks for spending a few extra minutes with me. I love, as I say, throwing in as much info as I can for you. So there we go. That's all there is to connecting up to your live site via FTP. I hope you were able to get everything connected on your side, all that information put in and connected up to your live site. Of course, again, we had the username, the password, 
and the server name that was or the host name that was our, our third item think of those almost as like three keys that you need to unlock access to your live uh, server via FTP. So hopefully that all worked for you. And again, of course, you saw how to do this inside Cyberduck. And you saw something else. You saw how to grab a file or grab some material from your live site and download it, make a change to it, and then publish that change back to the live site. Now, I get it. That change was brutally simple. I didn't want you to get hung up on the example, though. Really, it was more about demonstrating how you can download something, make a change to it, and upload it back. We could have created some kind of wacky, crazy, bizarre layout, maybe with some, some graphics and some CSS and all kinds of other wild stuff, but I didn't want you to get lost in the example. It was more about the overall point. So I hope that all worked out for you. And if you were paying attention you may remember that I said you needed five things to connect up to your site via FTP, and I never mentioned what the fifth one was. Any guesses? Coffee. You gotta have coffee. Always coffee. You gotta have coffee on the go. So that's the fifth thing that you need. Anyway, I hope it all worked out for you. I hope you had some fun here with me as well. Go and check out those links down in the show notes, if you would. If you wanna find out more about FTP and where you can find some of the best FTP applications, whether you're on the Mac side or the Windows side or wherever you happen to find yourself. All right, I hope you had some fun. As I say, if you haven't checked it out yet, go and grab that free online course that I put together over at 10tononline.com forward slash free. Go and grab it while it is still there. It is perfect for folks just like you and I, creative types, self-marketers, online business owners, people who love getting themselves involved in all kinds of online misadventures. Anyway, go and check it out while it's still there. I hope you had some fun. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.